Even though the total solar eclipse is over a year away, the WTOL 11 weather team is here to keep you updated and informed on how the eclipse may impact your life and have an impact on the region as this historic total solar eclipse takes shape across not only Toledo, but also a good portion of Northwest Ohio as we will be in the region of totality. As the eclipse draws closer, you can see the latest information on WTOL 11 plus. We've got the latest details streaming and also on our WTOL 11 YouTube channel for the latest video updates from the WTOL 11 weather team. Obviously, the eclipse has some big impacts on us as society on how we go about our day, but I want to talk today about how the eclipse may impact animals. That includes your pets, that includes wild animals, or even have you ever wondered what the animals at the zoo during the eclipse? I've got all of those answers coming up in today's update, and you can see the latest on WTOL 11 plus and YouTube. Let's dive into the science now and get into these graphics on the impact of the solar eclipse on animals. I want to start things off with just the general overview. During totality, we see darkness and it is almost an eerie and uncanny feeling. In other words, during the middle of the day, it gets totally dark and not only can that be confusing for humans like you and I, but it can confuse wild animals as well. They start to think that it is darkness time and those nocturnal animals like owls, they actually believe that it is nighttime during the totality of that eclipse. Now, temperatures also drop during the total eclipse and that might make sense because we see drops in temperatures at night and the sunshine warms up the temperatures. So during the total eclipse, a drop in the temperatures occurs and that can actually have an impact on certain animal species. So let's start things off by talking about pets. If you have a dog, undoubtedly they're a little bit scared by thunderstorms. Some are scared by fireworks. Generally speaking, the research that I've read shows that the eclipse has less of an impact on them than might thunder or fireworks. That being said, said if you're out in a big crowd watching the eclipse, say you're gathered at your favorite park, there's going to be a lot of tourists flooding into Northwest Ohio during April of 2024. If you do bring the dog out to the park to watch the eclipse, they might be a little bit startled by the crowd. That being said, the darkness of the eclipse really doesn't have that big of an impact on your dog. Thunderstorms and fireworks are probably more scary than the eclipse itself. Now this one you might kind of find kind of funny. Overall, the studies have shown that cats, they're generally in different to the eclipse. You know, cats have more important things to worry about, like jumping up on your countertop and knocking things over. Of course, cats are un unconcerned and unfazed by the eclipse. Pets can be frightened in crowds watching that eclipse. So again, keep that in mind, especially if your pet is sensitive to loud noises. Now we want to advise you if you do see any unusual behaviors, you can post those and also post your eclipse photos on the WTOL 11 weather app. We'd love to see photos of your pets during the eclipse. You also watching the eclipse and you can submit photos if you click the more button at the bottom of the free WTOL 11 weather app to send us your photos. Also another interesting app that you may find fascinating during the total eclipse. It's called iNaturalist. This is a really neat app that allows users to track and report animals during the eclipse and this app is used for actual scientific research. Scientists are able to congregate the data from the app that users submit and they can aggregate that data and they essentially write studies based on um, some some of the reports that occur. This is both useful for observing your pet dog and cat and also animals in the wild and how they might respond to the eclipse. Now let's talk about some other animal species such as those at the zoo. In 1984, there was also a total solar eclipse. This one happened on May 30th of 84. There was a scientific study done at the zoo in Atlanta, Georgia, and the chimpanzees were observed during this total eclipse. Now this is kind of an unusual reaction. When darkness settled in during the total eclipse, what was noticed in their chimpanzee exhibit, they all climb to the very top of their enclosure. They have a climbing platform that allows them to get way up high as of course they love climbing high things. But during the eclipse, they climbed it up and they pointed their bodies towards where the sun normally would be. In other words, they had an instinctive intuition as to where the sun was and they almost knew that it was still there even though they couldn't see it when the darkness settled in and the moon went in front of the sun. So certainly interesting to see those scientific studies done done on zoo enclosures and animals as well. What about animals in nature? Paul Merton is one researcher that looked at animals, in particular wild animals in the African savanna, and this occurred during the June 2001 eclipse. Now that eclipse is also noteworthy. It was the first total solar eclipse of the millennium in June of 2001. He looked at doves and he found that they were silent during the totality. However, after the doves sang their morning song, 
when it turned dark, they thought it was nighttime. And when the sun came out after the eclipse, they were tricked into thinking it was morning time. So what else does the dove do but sing that morning song? Also, certain other species of songbirds, they sang their evening songs as darkness started to set in. Even if the eclipse happens in the middle of the afternoon, when it starts to turn dark, wild animal species think that it is evening time. It really throws your natural circadian rhythms out of sync, especially when it turns pitch black in the middle of the daytime. So those birds that sing evening songs, they thought it was evening. And the early birds, the doves, they sang their morning chorus after the light came back. What about some other more creepy crawly insects and other types of animal species? Well, there was another study done in a 1991 total eclipse. And it's really interesting to see that over the years, these results and observations are generally the same. So this study looked at some of those slimier animals like frogs, cicadas, and crickets. And it found, once again, the time of day was a little bit confusing and perplexing to some of these animals as it may be to you and I when it turns pitch black in the middle of the daytime. Crickets and frogs sang their dusk chorus during the start of the eclipse. In other words, when the sun went away and it started to get dark out, they thought that it was nighttime and dusk. Another interesting observation, cicadas, you may be familiar with their noises during the summer. They went silence when the eclipse reached 50% totality. Now this one had less to do with daylight, but it had more to do with the temperature drop. When it gets dark in the middle of the day, we lose that heating from the sunshine and the temperature starts to drop. During totality, we lose a good deal of temperatures. One of these studies actually found that there's a 5.5 degree drop in temperatures caused by the solar eclipse. Now that is intuitively logical because without the sun, we lose the heat and when it turns dark, the temperatures drop. That had to do with the reason the cicadas kind of shut up during the eclipse because the temperatures dropped. Now, the lowest temperature that was recorded in some of these studies actually occurred 20 minutes after totality, and that may be the reason that we often see our low temperature that occurs in the morning hours. So when our eclipse happens in April of 24, you can expect the lowest temperature to occur about 20 minutes after the totality of the eclipse. All right, one last study that was really interesting. Now, spiders may be a little bit creepy and scary to you, but they were studied by a researcher during one of these total eclipses. Now, typically spiders take down their webs when it gets dark outside, and then they build them back up when it is light outside. That is a natural phenomenon that is ingrained and hardwired into that animal species. Now, one of the findings of this research showed that when it got dark out during the eclipse, the spiders thought that it was nighttime. They started taking their webs down. Now, when sunlight returned after the eclipse, they resumed building them back up. Of course, the eclipse was just an illusion of nighttime, and even though the spiders thought it was morning after the eclipse, it was really just the end of totality and the end of the total solar eclipse. Now, what these researchers did that was really, really interesting is they looked at the control group, which is the spiders that were just in the regular eclipse, and they had an experimental group where they shined a flashlight or some sort of artificial light on them. Now the differences were stark. The experimental group that had artificial light, they did not take down their webs because they thought it was still daytime. Now the control group that was during the total eclipse, it got dark on them. They took their webs down and then they built them up after. So the stark difference in daylight is the biggest factor contributing to how spiders respond to that. All right, a couple more species. Mosquitoes, the mosquitoes, they do come out during the darkness of the eclipse. Now, thankfully, our eclipse is going to happen during the month of April. And generally speaking, we don't start to see the worst of the mosquitoes until summertime. This is more a problem when you have an eclipse that occurs in the summer that the mosquitoes come out. Another interesting phenomenon, bees return to their hives during the eclipse. That's again a characteristic associated with how they devise night and day. When they think it's nighttime, they return to their hives and they likely come back out again after the eclipse when the light returns afterwards. Once again, hope you enjoyed this little bit on the solar eclipse and animals. We'll have plenty more content coming your way as the total solar eclipse draws closer in 2024. You can find the latest on WTOL 11 plus and our YouTube channel.